Hey, what's going on guys? It's Hanson here. So we're back with a brand new video and I wanted to get started with building out our own Discord bot library. So that way we can actually connect to the Discord gateway and API and we can create our own Discord bot. We're going to be using Deno in case you guys haven't heard of it. It's a brand new runtime environment that just came out a couple of days ago. And the person that created Deno is the same creator of Node.js. So I highly suggest you guys to check it out. It's pretty cool. And let's go ahead and get started. So have you ever wondered how Discord libraries such as Discord JS allow you to create powerful Discord bots? Now, there's a lot of heavy duty work that these libraries handle for us developers to build out the applications that we need. And we don't ever have to worry about how the library handles these things. The whole point of this whole video is we're going to go into the depths of the Discord developer platform and we're going to see how things work underneath the hood. So all of the heavy lifting done by the library developers are things that you're going to get to witness. You're going to be able to see how to actually make a WebSocket connection to the Discord gateway. Now, first, you need to understand what WebSockets are as well as APIs. A WebSocket is just a form of communication that is quote unquote full duplex or bi-directional, which basically just means communication both ways. So for example, from the client and the server in real time. So when you go on a chat application and you're sending a message to another user, you need to make sure that you're connected to a WebSocket. Your application needs to make sure that you're using some kind of bi-directional communication between one another. Otherwise, if you send a message to the other user, they're going to have to refresh the entire page. But with a WebSocket, you'll receive that message in real time and you can just dynamically update the client side. So that way you can see the updated messages. So pretty much WebSockets allow us to just build out very, very simple or up to very complex real-time applications. That's all it is. Now, API, on the other hand, stands for Application Program Interface, and they allow developers to expose their application to the public or authorized users, giving access to their platform to either perform any CRUD operations such as creating, reading, update, or deleting. So APIs allow two or more applications to communicate with one another. So for example, you might want to send all messages from a Discord server to a Minecraft server or all messages in your Twitch chat to the Discord server, right? These are two different examples. And if you wanted to send all messages from your Discord server to, let's say, the Twitch chat, you would need both Discord API as well as the Twitch API. Now, when it comes to the Discord developer platform, there are two main things that you'll ever need to worry about to build out your Discord bot. The gateway and the RESTful API. Now, the Discord REST API is a simple endpoint that allows any authorized application to make CRUD applications. Now, when I say simple, all I really mean is that you can make the simplest API call and you'll receive some data. But obviously, when it comes to other types of data, such as getting all guilds, getting all members, updating permissions, it becomes a little bit more complex. But we're going to go through all of these things. Now, if your bot is authorized, they'll be able to make requests such as retrieving users, guilds, guild members, guild channels, and more. And you typically use the REST API to perform these CRUD operations. So for example, if you wanted to update permissions on a guild member, you would have to hit some endpoint on the REST API. Now the Discord gateway allows you to make a secure connection with a WebSocket client. And once connected, you'll need to perform a couple of steps before your Discord bot can actually start forming some kind of bi-directional communication between your application to the gateway. So in contrast, the Discord gateway is for mainly sending events to the client, so, you know, the developers, whenever something occurs. So for example, if the bot logs in successfully, a ready event is fired from the Discord gateway, and we need to make sure our library or client takes care of that ready event. And for another example would be when the bot joins the server, the guild create event is being emitted, or whenever a message is being sent to a channel, the message create event is emitted from the Discord gateway, and then we have to handle that event. That seems like so much work just to make a Discord bot to go through all of this. That's why as a developer, it's important to always Always build modular and reusable code. Discord JS, Discord Pi, JDA developers, for example, they take away all of these things from the library users. So us people that build our bots with these libraries. These developers, they handle the, all the WebSocket connections, all of the events, all of the API calls, and they provide functions for you so that you can focus more on the logic of your application rather than focusing on all of the abstract, unnecessary things that you don't need to worry about. And this is actually a concept known as abstraction, where you hide all functionalities away from the user and you provide only the methods that they should ever need to use, such as if you wanted to fetch all messages in the channel. Underneath the hood, you would have to pass in your bot token in the header, and then you have to make an HTTP GET request to that specific endpoint on the Discord API. However, if you write a function, it's going to take care of that for you, and you don't ever have to worry about how the API request is made. So let's just see how things actually flow with a couple of diagrams and pictures. So let's just say, for example, we have this diagram over here and we're the client on the left side 
and this is the Discord gateway on the right side. And so initially what we want to do is we want to connect to the gateway and we need to use a WebSocket client. So if you're using Node.js, you can actually install WS, which stands for WebSocket, and you can use that library to make connections to a WebSocket. So we want to connect to the Discord gateway and we're going to pass in this URL. This is the WebSocket URL that we want to connect to. And as of right now, the latest version is version six, but in the future, it's going to be a different version such as version seven or eight, for example. So once you make that WebSocket connection for the first time, what happens then is the Discord gateway sends a payload. Now payload, you can think of a payload just as some kind of data that you receive back. Okay, it's just like a synonym for it. And that payload itself has some information that is sent to you. So for example, you can see that we have, a, this looks like JSON. Okay, but it's actually in a different format and you have to make sure you parse it when you actually receive this payload. Now you can see that we actually have two properties. We have op and I actually have a typo here. This should actually be in quotes, but we have op which stands for op code and then we have d and this value over here is the heartbeat interval over here and that heartbeat interval is the interval on when we need to send heartbeats to the discord gateway and we'll explain a little bit more about that when we actually get to that once you receive this payload we then need to send our credentials and this is where we have to identify ourselves we need to make sure that we tell discord hey look i have a valid bot token that i want to use to interact with your platform and you're gonna send that in an identify payload. And once you do that, the Discord gateway is going to validate everything. And if your token is correct, then that means that they're going to send a ready event, which indicates that your bot has successfully logged in. So the Discord gateway is going to send the payload back. And then you just need to make sure that you're sending heartbeats every number of seconds. And that number of seconds depends on whatever the heartbeat interval is. So now that we've successfully connected to the Discord gateway, we have this bi-directional communication. So whenever an event happens, the gateway will fire that event and we're gonna receive it through the WebSocket client. And then we can do whatever we want to do whenever that event happens. There's also one more thing that I should mention. So we talked about the Discord gateway. Now the Discord API itself, the REST API is different than the gateway. They're used for two different things. It's still important and you're actually going to be using both of these platforms to develop your application. But I just want to list out the difference between these two. Okay, because you're actually going to be using these together. So it's important that you understand the differences. Whenever you want to fetch messages, from a channel whenever you want to get details of a member, you have to call the Discord REST API for that. And you use the base URL discord.com slash API slash V6. And then there are different resources that you can request for, such as the user, the guilds that your bot is in, messages, channels, etc. And every single time you make this HTTP request, you need to always make sure you're passing in an authorization token, which is basically your bot token. Now, if you're connected to the gateway, of course, you need to make sure you are connecting through the, the WebSocket URL. But like I said, you're going to be using both of these together. Now, you're probably wondering, well, what are opcodes now? Because I know we briefly mentioned opcodes a couple of uh, slides ago. You can see that we have this opcode 10. Okay, now that opcode 10 basically just stands for hello. It's the hello payload. And all that means is that the connection was acknowledged. Okay, but we still need to make sure we're identifying ourselves. And at a, high, at a low level, opcodes are basically just machine language instructions that tell the CPU what to do. That's all it is. At a higher level, we can think of opcodes just as some specific task or process that happened. So op obviously stands for operation and code stands for code. And if we go back to this table, this is actually directly from the Discord uh, documentation. You can see that we have gateway and we have all of the gateway opcodes over here. We have opcode 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, all 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So when we first connect to the Discord gateway, we receive the payload with an opcode of 10. Again, this is just to call the hello opcode. And it literally says sent immediately after connecting. And it contains the heartbeat interval to use, which means the duration, how often you're supposed to send heartbeats to the gateway, which basically allows you to maintain that connection. Heartbeating is important because if you don't heartbeat, the connection is not going to live throughout the entire application. That's the only way to keep your bot connected to the gateway. Because if you're disconnected from the gateway, then you won't receive any events at all. After we receive the hello payload, which is opcode 10, we then need to identify ourselves and then we also need to make sure we're heartbeating so you can see that the opcode for heartbeat is one and it says fired periodically by the client to keep the connection alive and then the opcode for identify is two and it starts a new session during the initial handshake when you're connecting with a web socket you're basically making a handshake and for the discord gateway you need to make sure that that handshake is successful which means that you need to make sure you're passing in the correct credentials as well as a correct platform correct uh operating system in the payload which i'll show you when we actually get to the implementation 
But if you don't pass in anything that's valid, then the gateway is going to say, hey, look, this was an invalid, uh, this was an invalid request. Please try again. So hopefully all of this made sense. And I just wanted to briefly go over this because I know uh, I don't want to like just jump right into the implementation. I want to talk a little bit about it first and then show you guys how all of these things really work together. All right. So I'll see you guys in my next video where we're actually going to get started with implementing our very own Discord library.